you make so much butter fat, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Now this part, you gotta be really careful. You wanna make sure that it goes up as high as possible, but you do not want to get their teats in. Hello goat lovers, Crystal here with Blue Cactus Dairy Goats, and today is the day that we turn our little bucklings into weathers, but first we gotta milk out these does and we can go over their milk test results. How you doing today, Lily? So Lily did really good on her milk test results. She actually went up a whole point in butter fat. So she was 5.4. Now she's 6.4, which is awesome. And Maddie, you went up two points in butter fat, didn't you? So she was 4.8 last month, and this month she's 6.8. Come on, Mayo. Come here, Cassie. Throughout a doe's lactation, um, the period of them producing milk, um, so in the very beginning, as soon as they have babies, they have very high butter fat and not so much milk, um, just because the babies need that higher fat content and they're not drinking as much milk. So as the babies start drinking more, they start producing more milk, or as you start milking them, either way, but they'll start producing more milk and then their butter fat will go down. So throughout their lactation, like as they get further into milking, and at this point we're th three to four months, um, so their milk production will start to dwindle down a little bit, but then their butter fat goes back up. So this is completely normal for their butter fat to be peaking, um, and it's just actually really exciting to see the numbers. I've never seen the numbers month to month on my herd before, so I've always just gauged it and randomly weighed to see how much they have, and now I have to do it all the time so that I can send in the results, and I just love it. I get excited to see the numbers, and all of the girls' butter fat numbers went up, so wait until I tell you tippy. Good morning, Cammy. Good morning, beautiful. Hi, Dreamer. Dreamer. Gorgeous. So Cammy this year is putting a decent amount of milk in the pail. Um, however, nothing in comparison to previous years. Um, she usually makes a lot more, but if you guys didn't see the video of her delivery, it was pretty rough on her. So I literally had to dig out three of the four kids that she had. So had that not happened, she'd be probably making triple the amount of milk. Um, but again, due to that really difficult um, delivery, she's just not making as much milk as, as she would and as she has in previous years. Cause she's always been one of my top milkers. She just makes a ton of milk. Um, but this year she's just kind of right there with the rest of the crowd. So that being said, She's still, you know, holding strong. She's still making a good amount of milk for, for a Nigerian, just not as much as she typically would. Um, and Dreamer is just kind of staying real steady, which is something really cool to see. Also because, you know, when, when, you're, when you're doing the milk test, you wanna see, oh, okay, are they gonna make a ton of milk in the very beginning and then just drop two months in? 
um, or you know, are they going to hold strong throughout a extended lactation? And Dreamers, so for the fourth test, she's just kind of staying real steady and strong right there at the same amount um, of pounds. And her butter fat is also really decently high, so she's in the seven seven percent um, area. So very proud of them. Hi, Dinky. How are you today? So Miss Dinky here, last month she was at 7% butter fat, which is really good. But this milk test, she came in at 8% butter fat. So she's just making a ton of butter fat and you're just doing amazing, aren't you? And Lodi here, she is also impressive. Now this is her second freshen. So this is her second time having babies and she just had a single, so just one kid and she is producing with the rest of the crowd. But you get that from your grandma Lacey, huh? Because she makes so much milk, what she used to. But it's in her genes that she passed down. And Lodi here, if she earns her milk star this year, she will be a six star milker. So six generations behind her, or five generations behind her that have earned their milk stars. So that is pretty cool. Isn't it, girl? Oh, Daisy. So you guys know how much I love my Daisy. She's just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And believe it or not, this first freshener, first time having babies with just a single, is projected to have more pounds of milk in the 305 days um, than anybody else in the herd. And she's holding strong at three pounds of milking. And of course the projection is for a matured dough. So it's not necessarily what she is at the first freshener, it's what you can expect out of her. But either way, that is just super impressive. Um, and she's got good butter fat too, so. You're just amazing in all arenas, aren't you Daisy? Yes. All right, and this beautiful queen here, May, champion May, is not doing as well as um, she typically does either. So. This year, she just had the single buckling, who was gorgeous, by the way. Ain't that right, girl? Um, but anyway, she just had a single buckling, and she's just not producing a ton of milk this year. Now, she already has her milk star, so I'm not worried about that. But she is approaching 10 years old, so she's an older girl. She's been given lots and lots of milk for a lot of years, huh? You're still a queen, Miss Abilene. So Abilene is doing really, really good too. She is one of my does that I absolutely love her confirmation. I love her udder. She has large teats and to see her results on the milk test, um, just to back up how gorgeous she is, is always exciting. So Abilene is one of my does that is staying really steady. She's not dropping in her lactation or anything like that. Um, so pretty much all four of her tests have been very consistent, right around three pounds. Um, and her butter fat from last um, last milking to this milking went up 1.2 percent so she's doing good aren't you aren't you babe now wildy here is also an impressive doe i know I'm, I'm just proud of all of them but still so she's holding strong just like abilene all of her testings are consistent with each other she's not dropping in any milk however her butter fat percentage just continually gets better come baby so she's just doing very good, especially as a first freshener. So she's showing that she's on track to have her milk star earned as well. Oh, who's that girl? It's Pippi. Is that the Butterfat machine? The champion of Butterfat. The Pretty champion cool. of Butterfats? Tippy Tippy. All right, Tippy. So something I've noticed, you guys, is her face is getting really white. She looks like she has clown makeup on but that's not the point, right? The point is you make so much butter fat, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Would you like to tell them what you what you earned? You're gonna make me tell them? Okay, so she was 8.4 last milking and she went up to 9% butter fat. You guys, it's crazy, Tippy. You are just an overachiever. So she is absolutely on track to earn her milk star um, for Butterfat. Good morning, Lidai. How are you? Okay, so Lidai, 
she is the last dough to be milked today, but she is doing really good. She's on track to earn her star, and she has um, over one point more percent in butter fat. And she's also just staying super steady with, with her lactation. And that's honestly what you wanna see. You wanna see that they can continually make milk um, at a steady pace and not drop drastically all of a sudden. So she's doing good, huh girl? And Miss Lid Eye here, if she earns her milk star, she will be a seven generation. Ain't that right? Good girl. So as I mentioned in, in the previous video, like you do have to keep your dose in milk for at least 240 days. Um, now, if you don't say start breeding late like we did this year, um, that's not an issue. However, um, Lid Eye was the first to have her kids this year and she's like November 15th would put her at 240 days. So ideally you keep them on for their lactation for the full 305 and the point for the 305 is because they need to be able to, um, you know, if you're breeding them every single year, they need that two months, that last two months of their pregnancy to give all, um, anything, all energy needs to go to making those babies. So you would dry them up two months before they have their babies again, um, which you know, we bred late this year, so so we're not going to do that, but the 305, definitely not. But I think a lot of these girls are going to be able to make the 240, probably not Cammie and Cassie, because they wanted to take forever to have their babies, but but yeah, quite a few of them. We're, I'm feeling strong, I'm going to be milking a lot this year, and yes, they're going to be penned up with the bucks for partially, um, with some of that time while we're breeding, but, but I want to get some of these stars on these girls and, and just continue to see how they do, so it's exciting. We are ready to get these five little dudes banded. Um, now for banding, there's two different banders that you can actually use. The ones you guys, if you've seen my videos on how to band, um, you've seen me use this one. Um, now this one comes with little green rubber bands that are like super heavy duty rubber bands. So they're just a little green rubber band, but super thick. So don't use a normal rubber band. That's not gonna do it. So for this one, you're just going to put the band on, you open it up, and then you're just going to pull their testicles through, and then you'll close it up, and then just kind of pull off the band off of these little metal things. And then there is the California Bander. Um, now this one I actually had to purchase and use last year, and it was actually a pretty easy method, um, but if you happen to have like standard size goats or, or a goat that just is very well endowed, I'll just say it that way, and it won't fit through this bander, then you're gonna want the California bander. So, and it's super easy to do, but this one, you're gonna come from behind and they'd be in a stand. I'll show you guys. It has these bands and you'd put it on your hand here. That's made for your left hand and you're gonna put it all the way back as far as it can go. And then there's a little notch here. And you put this band in that notch and you're gonna pull it a little bit tight through your, your two fingers there. And then you just kind of pull it really tight around and then you're gonna put it through this notch. And then it just comes right off. So I'm gonna show you both ways. Um, this guy here happens to be happens to be little, so he's going to have no issue um, with me using this bander. So he doesn't need to be strapped in there. So, and, and again, with this bander, it's easier if somebody's holding them and they're kind of just kind of sprawled out where you can get to them. So there's lots of different reasons that you might want to band a buckling. Um, if they're not top quality, for one, um, bucklings should always be of the best quality. Um, if you consider they could throw 150 kids in their span of their life where a doe, you know, is looking right around 20. So they really, really make a lot of kids. So they should be superior quality. Um, there should be nothing wrong with them. And they should come from really great genetics as well. So once you band them, um, they are going to show some discomfort, mainly for the first couple. At first, it's like nothing. But um, after a couple of hours, they're... They're definitely showing that they are uncomfortable. Um, you'll see them laying around a lot. And it goes on for a couple days. Um, but it's almost like if you felt, if you felt 
their testicles within a couple hours, um, they're already getting cold. So like what's going to happen is it's going to kill the nerves where the rubber band is. It's going to kill those nerves off and you know, it's just starts, it loses the blood supply to the testicles and they just kind of start dying. So they will actually mummify. They'll get hard as a rock. So then you got to go around and find them and then you gift them to people when you feel like they need a set. And then as they start falling off, you guys, um, so you don't remove the rubber band ever. It's all of it's going to fall off. See, this still has the rubber band attached. And once you do band them, you don't want to remove it. It could cl cause clots and everything else. It's not a good thing. So once, once the deed is done, the deed is done. You got to leave it be. Um, so anyway, they're going to mummify. They're going to start um, about two to three weeks. They will start separating from the body. And at that point, you're going to want to, we have in my blue coat, you're going to want to keep a really good eye on it. And when it does start separating, um, what I do is spray it with this. It's blue coat. So it's an antifungal and it also helps dry out that wound. And it just kind of helps the process along. So it makes them fall off sooner and then just keeps it clean. So that's what I use on them when it starts separating. And I think we're ready. Okay, as with everything, you're going to want to clean the area really, really well where that band is going to go. So just with some alcohol and a cotton ball. I know, buddy. All right, so just kind of pull it through. Now, can you move your leg just a little, Emily? Now this part, you got to be really careful. You want to make sure that it goes up as high as possible, but you do not want to get their teats in. So there we go. Close it and I just kind of pull the rubber band off. And he's good to go. So that's up high and his, his little teats are not underneath that band. So he's done. You are a trooper. Good boy. Now we're going to give you a new pen to keep your mind off of it, okay? There you go, mister. All right, so this was the pen that the little dolings were in, but since they're with the herd, we're just going to let the bucklings come in here. Um, and there's just a little bit of extra growth and things like that in the and the A-frame, so it's going to help keep their mind off of the fact that they've just been banded. And yeah, and you can see it's been like 10 minutes and he is doing just fine. Okay, we're going to clean him up. Now I did forget to mention, I don't do this to any buckling that is less than eight weeks old. And the reason being, there's something called the urethra right here. And if you pinch that off before it's actually developed, then they are more likely to get something called urinary calculi, which is literally just stones. And then they can't pass their urine and it could kill them. So all of these boys are eight weeks and older, or older than eight weeks, rather. All right. Okay. You'd be surprised what can actually fit through this little bander here. Okay. Very good. 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 Very with the normal bander here. The other two boys are pretty big. So I'll show you guys one more time. Hold on, buddy. I know you hate being held. I think he just hates being held this specific way. Wow. Okay. So he's all done. 
Just for the record, he was screaming like that before we ever touched him. And that looks good. Good job, buddy. So this little guy could definitely use the other bander. And the California bander isn't necessary for this guy, but just for purpose of showing you guys how it works. Okay, so here we go. This is the California bander. This goes all the way to the back and come all the way up. This is the band. And like I said, there's a little notch on it. So you're gonna put that notch in here. This goes in between your first two fingers. And there we go. Okay, so you're gonna grab making sure from the other side that his teeth are below where the band is gonna be. And they are. So you pull it tight. Put it down in that notch. And then that comes out. And that is what it should look like. See? And it's up high. Both teats are not in the ring. Okay, last dude. I'm going to show you the California bander again. Put it on your hand. There's that hook. Hook it in. Bring that, pull it a little bit. Put it between your first two fingers. Get in here. It is kind of awkward using this one at first. Can you lift them up a little, Emily? Okay. Pull tight. Pull down. And there we go. Alright, so you see how it looks good and tight? Both teats are outside of the band. And he's good. That is all. Hold down, we'll get you to your new little pen. Look, new stuff. There we go, guys. Guess what time it is. So, Last video, I made this rosemary soap with you guys, and it is ready to be cut. So, I thought I would cut it with you guys, and look at it. It's kind of really cool, a big old log of soap. But it is really pretty, it smells gorgeous. So first, of course, I'm going to shave off these edges. Oh man, it smells good. Perfect. All right, this was, this is always the funnest one. The very first, cause, cause the butts don't always look that cool. When the butts look cool, you get really excited to cut the soap, but. All right, let's see. Ooh, there's a lot of green in that one. Let's see, hopefully we get some more swirling going on than that. Ooh. Check it. So cool. Alright, let's, let's turn the scale on to weigh it, because that doesn't work if you don't. Good to go. Alright. Look, it's so cool. So I know I said there's lots of cool things about soap making. If you guys haven't tried making soap, you really should. It really is just a fun... It's like an arts and craftsy kind of a thing. And... It's just very satisfying. You're like, I did that? So, pretty neat. Oh my gosh, it's just getting prettier and prettier. Ooh. 
Look at that. That is so cool. I just love it. It's like you could see things in it, like the dragon or a bat. That's really neat. They're too pretty. The drop swirl is one of the really easy techniques with, with soap making, but it just really makes the soap so pretty. But again, if you don't move quick with the goat milk soap, you're not going to get a bunch of swirls because it's just going to blop, blop, blop in there all thick like. And some essential oils, they like rapidly, rapidly will um, thicken up your soap. Like the long long, it wants to turn it, it just wants it to be hard like this block in like two seconds. So. That one, you have to move super quick, but it is such a beautiful essential oil smell. And so is rosemary. I'm loving this bar. I cut the sage bar the other day, and that one is really, really fun to cut too. Because for one, it smells heavenly, and for two, if you guys haven't seen the sage bar, it's it's just lovely. It's a wonderful bar. But we need more because we're almost sold out of it. And anyway, that's one of those fun ones to cut too because it's a different te technique that you use. It's the hanger swirl. So you're kind of putting layering colors and then you take your hanger and you put it in there and pull it out and it just makes this flower on the inside. So every time you cut it, the flower looks a little different and they're just fun. Just fun. That one's pretty. And it has been a few hours since the little bucklings um, were banded. About an hour after we banded them, they did start to whimper a little bit, um, but that only lasted for like another hour, for maybe an hour. Probably more like 30 minutes, but but now they're they're quiet. They're doing a lot of laying around, but they're doing good. I like that one. I like them all. Who am I kidding? They're so pretty. Our maple bar, which, man, I'm going to have to start getting on the fall soaps here pretty soon. That one was always really, really cool because it has different colors in it. And there were several bars that, I, for whatever reason, it looked like it had a jack-o'-lantern in it. So, but it is the drop swirl method also. So that bar turns out really, really pretty. And I love the maple bar, but it is one of our seasonal bars, so... Uh, again, I'm going to have to start making it because it has to cure for six weeks. It needs to be ready for fall for you guys. Oh, that looks pretty cool. Nice. And that's the last bar. Too pretty. Want to see it again, you guys? You do, you do, you do. Love it. Now what I'm going to do is take these over to the little cleanup station and I'm just going to pretty them up. Just cut the trim off the loose edges here just so it looks a little fancier. All cleaned up. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to get on a few more soaps for the day. Um, but, so head on over to our Etsy shop, you guys. We have a ton of varieties right now. Right now we have 39 varieties, and I want to say 14 of them are all brand new um, varieties that potentially we won't have once the summer passes. So, I'm not going to keep them all on. Some will be seasonal. But, again, there's something for everybody. Your skin will thank you. Head on over to the shop. Still use the code SUMMERTIME until the end of July, you guys, and you're going to get 10% off. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you soon.